What was the last session for you? Okay. Um, so the last se uh, session today was um, I had another gyno exam. So just to make sure that um, I could take it, that my anxiety didn't try to take over, which was good. I didn't have any problems. Um, yay. <laughs> um, and then really they are s setting you up with your future plan of how they want you to continue on so that you make sure that you um, are cured from vaginismus. Because vaginismus, it's really about um, anxiety and it is more of a mental problem whereas that your anxiety is so strong that it becomes a physical problem and that you're, you're locking up um, your vagina and so that you can't have penetrative sex. And so um, through these two weeks it's really been about being able to to let myself know I'm okay, nothing's wrong, um, and to be able to suppress that anxiety and take back over. And um, thankfully I was able to do that successfully. Um, and so today the last section the session was just to um, have that last exam and then to f follow through for the next eight months. She has a plan that she wants me to go through to make sure that um, I stay confident in my abilities um, and that I'll be done with vaginismus. Yeah. Okay. And um, and how all that like how all that started like how you also found found out this place and yeah. Okay. Because you're not from here, no. Right now I'm from Mobile, Alabama, um, so you can probably hear the southern <laughs> in me. But um, I was a virgin before I got married. We got married last year, August the 11th, and um, on our honeymoon that. That first night we realized that um, something wasn't quite right. We thought maybe I was just nervous or tired because I was a little, um, I was anxious that night. I wasn't really thrilled about doing anything, but um, I was going to try to and it just we were just not successful. And during the um, next week of our honeymoon, we had problems, just it was very painful for me. And we just felt like we were doing something wrong. Um, and it just kind of, I felt myself, I started to shut down then. Whereas um, before we got married, I was more comfortable with um, holding hands and kissing and stuff. Whereas that initial pain from that first week, um, I felt myself start to shut down. And uh, the longing for like physical intimacy and like touch and stuff wasn't there. Um, and when we got back from our cruise around, I waited a couple months, I knew I had a problem, um, but just tried to avoid it. I'm very stubborn. And in October, I went to my gynecologist to let her know that I had an issue and um, that I couldn't have sex. It was very painful to try. I didn't, didn't want my husband touching me anymore. I didn't want him to hug me or kiss me or anything. Just, we felt very distant in that aspect. Um, and so, she told me that she thought she knew what I had, and so um, she tried to do a pap smear on me, but I freaked out and almost jumped off the table at her, <laughs> in which she told me that I had vaginismus, which she went on to describe um, meant that I was forcing my vagina to close due to my anxiety and um, that it, that I was letting that take over myself so that I couldn't function properly like most women can. Um, and so I started going to physical therapy after that. Um, physical therapy, they did internal and external work and it was about, um, they told me that it was a muscle problem, that my muscles were flipping, which is impossible, um, but they, were, they told me that my muscles were flipping and that's what my issue was and so I'd have someone internally stick their fingers in and grab my muscle and twist it and push down um, until the pain subsided a little bit. They did that a lot and I had different stretches to do. Kegels was one that I did. Um, that went on until December which we didn't feel like anything was any better. If anything it was worse. I just wanted it to go away. I just wanted vaginismus to leave. Um, I'm a private person when it comes to um, personal problems and so that was another hard thing. I didn't necessarily want to share that part, um, that pain with Sean or with anybody. 
Um, it was hard for when the topic got brought up. I was very defensive to myself. I couldn't watch movies anymore that had any kind of romantic scene in them. I would just just lose it. Um, just completely break down. There was many nights that it was like at night where Sean would try to give me a kiss goodnight and I would just break out in tears. Um, just the feeling of defeat. And after I finished or stopped doing my physical therapy in December, I didn't do anything for several months and it wasn't until May that I stumbled across um, their book, A Private Pain. And I read it and um, learned about this facility. They had um, a 95% cure rate, which is unheard of. And so I looked um, more into the program, called their office, got in touch with the doctors, finished the book, um, and got super excited because I, there was hope then that vaginismus could be cured and that they could do it in two weeks for me. And which they got me on um, prescription Zoloft, which helps me with my anxiety. Um, me and Sean both, it takes a little while to get to your system, but we both felt like it was a game changer for me. Uh, I have a little bit of an OCD problem where I, I'm a clean freak, love, need everything, super clean. Um, I was able to relax more about that. Um, some stomach issues that I had, the anxiety medicine helped me where I wasn't having those problems anymore. I just felt more, just like I could breathe better. Almost. Um, just to like whenever she would go to take a test, she would the day before she would be so worked up about it that it was I mean she would just mess her stomach up and everything. It was just she was just more relaxed in general about everyday life and and just more relaxed with me. You know if I didn't come in and clean a whole lot and seeing everything as clean as she was supposed to be, you know it was okay then. She still wanted everything clean, but it was just it was just totally a change in her personality. Right. Um, and so by the time I got here, um, very headstrong that I was going to kick vaginismus to the side and thanks to the doctors here, they were able to help me out and now I'm normal <laughs> and um, everything has been very successful, very confident in my abilities, um, more confident in myself. Honestly, I, there's just um, a sense of relief that um, vaginismus doesn't have a, a hold on me or my life and it doesn't get to doesn't get to define some aspects of our marriage doesn't make um, doesn't inhibit us in ways that it it did before um, which is awesome and the, how you distinguish like what was specific about this process that it allowed you to actually Go through. Okay, so with the physical therapy, it was all of it was all physical. Um, they were they were only really concerned about the muscles and trying to to fix um, my vagina. But it wasn't my vagina that was the problem. It was all the anxiety that I have. And so what was so spectacular about this program is that Dr. Lauren, Dr. Ross, Dr. Dita, they're all very um, adamant about the you have to control your anxiety and so they're less focused on the vagina and more focused on the person and um, and they're so like the first session is just it's getting to know um, you and then getting to know your body and making sure that um, you know you know where everything is and that um, that you see that that everything looks normal and it's uh, the doctors are there with you, holding your hand if, if they need to, and um, just walking you through it and making sure that um, you're not tolerating anxiety because they don't. Um, they that that's one of the things that I noticed a big like in physical therapy. If something hurt me, they would stop and they would say, "That's fine. Well, don't don't worry about it. I'm sorry that I hurt you." here if like the first day when I my anxiety gave me pain and I wanted to lock up um, the doctors literally said they were like tell that anxiety no shut it off and um, they don't let you tolerate your anxiety which is what you have to do you have to you can't let it take control and um, so that was what's so awesome about this program is that they work they work with the individual 
and their their confidence um, to be able to defeat their anxiety, which will lead to their defeat in vaginismus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, and how how do you think you're thinking about sex? How it like our sexuality generally? How it influences being here? Uh, yeah. So, um, like I mentioned before, because I had this problem, it kind of um, turned off my sexual side. Whereas, like, I, I mean, I didn't even want any kind of physical touch. To the point, I mean, couldn't even really didn't even want Sean to hug me or anything like that. Um, not because I don't love him, but I was afraid that it would lead to something that I couldn't give him, um, which was not good for him. It was not good for me. It's not good for our marriage. So, being here at this program. Um, they are beginning, they work on one, on conquering your anxiety to, to, to make you be able to be cured from vaginismus and to give you that confidence in that you, you are normal and that you can um, take back over that aspect of your life. And then on, um, they kind of walk you through different ways that you can open back up to your sexuality, which is the big thing for me now, so that I may have conquered vaginismus, but I still have to work on opening back up to um, that sexual aspect. And as a woman, that's harder because I've associated all the pain that I had with vaginismus with sex. And so in my mind, it's been sex equ equals pain. And so um, I've been having to, to work on changing that, whereas um, where sex can be a good thing because it, it is and it should be an enjoyable thing um, and that will t I mean that takes longer than two weeks it takes longer to train to train the mind but definitely um, through their guidance and their recommendations I've been able to enjoy more sexual things than I have um, in this whole year that we've been married oh, yeah. I, mean, it's, I think it's more of just relax and just not worrying about the problem or anything, it's just more about having fun and enjoying each other now. So it's, I mean, it's just a lot different. Right. That's really great. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but how was, like, um, can you somehow maybe relate to what you were thinking about sex as a teenager and how, like, that was also shaping your, I don't know, like, sexuality and what, yeah, was, yeah. It, was it present? Somehow. Okay, so um, I grew up in a family that um, is really reserved, and um, we believe you know you're not shouldn't have sex before marriage. Um, my family, we didn't really talk very much about sex. Um, my mom didn't even know I had a period till probably a year, maybe even a year and a half after I started. Um, it was just we just weren't open about that. Not super close to. Um, either one of my parents um, or really even my siblings very much and so something so personal like I said before I keep personal things very private so something you know, um, like that would be very private to me and I didn't I haven't shared anything and um, with them and so I just always assumed like growing up no sex before marriage and that was kind of it I didn't I Personally, I didn't think a whole lot about um, sex because it was just always uh, kind of a no. And then when we started dating, there's obviously the um, desires and stuff. And there was, uh, you know, we would kiss and stuff. And there was, there was the urge to want to, to do more. And so the, I know that I do have that sexual side to me because there, I did want, to, I wanted to do more. I wanted to go further. Um, but we... Um, waited to have sex until our wedding night and even then I, I wanted to be able to please Sean that way but um, it was the anxiety part that was so difficult for me there's so many expectations yeah. that's the thing you get so many expectations from TV and movies and stuff and yeah. so you it makes you feel like um, it's, it's like gonna be this kind of way yeah. right yeah so your your expectations are so so high yeah. and then um, that's another thing like our expectations for sex was so 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 high and then when we couldn't do anything I mean it was like are we just doing something wrong right or? what's wrong with me what's wrong with us kind of thing I think I re even remember us talking about that we were like 
something's, I mean, we were like, something's wrong with me. I need to go back and go to the doctor. There's something wrong. I mean, and there was, but we're thinking physical, whereas it was the anxiety that was taking over. Yeah. But, I mean, it, and she is, she is more of a high stress individual. And like, I, and I kind of figured it was, you know, from, from the wedding and everything, because it was her and her mother doesn't always get along the best, and they're both high stress people. So, two high stress people. When it comes to a situation like that, I thought maybe it was just anxiety from that. Maybe after a little while, it would get better, but it didn't, and it was obvious she was in some pain. So I was like, no, "Please go find, you know, what's going on." But, but yeah, that everybody, that was one thing. You know, we 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 really did. We sit down with a pastor of ours, and he kind of explained, you know, told us about more of the reality of sex, how everybody fills it up, but you know, it's much different than you originally thought. We've even, we even read books uh, before before we got married to kind of give us a more realistic view, but we're still so much we just didn't know, you know, and that was a big thing. And it probably, that not knowing is probably what made the, the suffering go on much longer than it needed to on her part, which ended up hurting her more by turning, by turning it, up, it off more in her mind and just making the problem last so much longer. But. And what was, like, you had a, even a conversation with Pastor before marriage, yeah? Like, yes. that was a preparation. What, 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 like, um, what was that? Like, was it helpful for you? Also, he was managed, like, managed to, I don't know, like, get you, okay, I'm like, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, what did he say about uh, this stuff? Or? So we went out to eat with him and his wife, and he was talking um, about that, kind of how I mentioned earlier, it's just everything that we see kind of puts sex on this big pedestal, and we all, you know, we're all thinking it's going to be the greatest thing ever, and that, you know, everybody's going to be perfect at it, and, and, that every time you're going to have the, the best time of your life and, and stuff like that. Um, and what he was talking about is that it's it's not like that. You Especially at the beginning because and if both people are virgins too and you don't have much experience, then um, how is it going to be like that? You're, you're newbies at it. And really that it was... Um, just to be able to find the, the humor in it and to be able to laugh at it with each other to make it an enjoyable thing instead of a stressful thing, which I feel like it has the, um, you know, probability to be with most people that if there is, you know, a goal that you're trying to achieve and that you think that sex is supposed to be this way, but um, all you can seem is for it to not necessarily be as enjoyable or the same way that you see on movies, it, you consider yourself a failure, and then sex becomes a stressful thing instead of an enjoyable thing between partners, um, which is how it was for us. It was yeah. if we felt like failures. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of more of a good talk, you know. So you, you're not so stressed about that coming up. You know, we both didn't know what we we're doing, so it was. You know, don't put a lot of stress on yourself, learn with each other, and enjoy it. Right, yeah, he just he talked about trying to keep it fun and uh, yeah. and exciting, but, you know, that there's grace for both people because, um, you, like I said, you're new, and so you got to figure out what you like and what the other person likes. Don't be afraid to try new things, um, and then if you don't like it, just throw that one to the curb and go to the next thing. So. He was really just talking about um, just being flexible in, you know, trying out each other's ideas, um, being open to that, and just being open to the, to the, you know, mindset that it's not going to be what you ex expect it to be. It's not going to be the Hollywood sex that you see on to, on movies. Yeah. And you said that also for these two weeks, you even learned something more that you don't know what because you said that that the, the pastor talk was already something like opening, but actually you still were not knowing a lot, and now you are much more aware. So what would that be? Right. So um, they work more about um, they 
tell you different positions to try and um, different tactics to use and just want to, um, they're, they're very more, um, I guess, blunt with you than our, our pastor would have been, you know, obviously. Um, but they're, they made different suggestions for us to try and really just made us feel comfortable with each other, but it was also um, comfortable that uh, with them that they were kind of not necessarily like they weren't coaching us but they were you know um, cheering for us that they wanted us to be successful and so they're like here are different things that you can do that you might like if you don't that's fine you don't have to like them um, but they give you very op you know very different options so people that are maybe not as familiar with sex like I didn't grow up watching a lot of movies that had sex in them. Um, I didn't watch porn or anything like that. So, I mean, in my mind, sex is like missionary. <laughs> um, and so they were very um, open with sharing. Like they have a, a, a book, for example, that, you know, suggests different things for you to try just to see like what you like because you don't know what you like until you, you um, try different things. So that's a, a different way that we learned from um, Dr. Ross and Dr. Dita and Dr. Lauren. And how it is to, to not feel this fear, like, for you? Oh my gosh, it's, it is amazing. Like, um, it's just, it honestly is just like a big weight is lifted off your shoulders. Because like I said, there's just the, the big thing for me is I've, I've always wanted to be a mom. I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, not, not anytime soon, but I've always wanted to be a mom. And so the, the main thing were, was for me was that I felt like if I can't have sex, I can't have a kid. I won't be able to have a kid. And that um, was heartbreaking for me and just put a lot of weight on me. Is that I felt like as a woman, like I'm given a uterus, that's my job. I can, you know, I can be able to carry that child if I choose to. And I felt like that was kind of ripped from me and that... Um, I didn't have the option to even be able to to have my own child. Obviously, there's adoption, um, which I'm all for, but I wanted to be able to be able to experience pregnancy and childbirth, and I felt like that was all stripped from me. And then there's not only that aspect, but it's just the aspect of like I felt a failure as a wife, um, a failure to Sean because I wasn't able to to please him that way. Um, then it was not only penetration sex, but I, I didn't want to do anything. So, um, I mean, I just felt like I felt it wasn't fair to me, but then it wasn't fair to Sean. And then I have um, siblings and stuff who talked about, who would talk about us having kids or, you know, our parents would talk about us having kids. And every time somebody said something, it's, I mean, it's like, Somebody was just stabbing, stabbing me, just reminding me of that, that you're a failure. You, you can't do that. You're, you're unable to, to be that. You're not, it's just like, I felt less of a woman because I had this, this problem that I felt like everybody else could do and I was unable to. And so being on the flip side of it and being able to say that I'm cured of vaginismus and that I can do everything that every other woman can do is just so exciting. And it's exciting that, um, that I can have sex, that one day if I choose to, if we choose to, we'll be, I'll be able to, to carry a child. Um, and that I just feel so much more just the relief is there and that, um, such a, big weight that was on my shoulders and on our marriage and being married only a year I mean that was a that was a big thing yeah, for us it, it was, was this whole this whole year has been about um really about my vaginismus and we haven't really we never got to experience the the honeymoon phase that people talk about because we didn't get that I mean we we were married a year before we were ever even able to have sex um and so it's, go ahead. But just seeing her confidence, it just, 
has just totally boosted seeing that that she can you know she feels like she can do anything now that she can just 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 all right it's time to put it past let's just go on with life just time for the next thing we can finally start start living you know right and right just the i mean the confidence that's the big thing and and so that's why i like the biggest thing i could say for people who you know have vaginismus or think they might have vaginismus is is that you are not alone factor because that that's the what's wrong with you that i've never heard of that problem and i'm like oh okay great well i suck um and so th that's just that's the big thing there i mean there is help there's places like this women's therapy center that can help you and you can be cured and that um you know you can can take back control over your vagina and over your life that anxiety doesn't have to rule you sex is such um it's something that our culture our society has built up that it's um that our the media is, just says yes yeah. the media says that everybody needs to be having sex and so um somebody especially you know around our age um to be unable to have sex or to not be having sex um, can s sometimes feel hu humiliating, especially as somebody that we're married, so it's like everybody knows that we're having sex or thinks we're having sex when actually we can't. And so there'd be times where people would like make jokes, of, um, you know, sometimes people will make sexual jokes, um, and yet no one really knows that. I was unable to do that and that is hard but it, it is interesting that you say that because the more that um, I have opened up about it I've have, I have heard of other stories about you know this person has experienced something similar or they have something different but it also you know relates to the fact that they have problems when it comes to sexual intimacy and stuff um, so I think the biggest thing about vaginismus is that it's it's hidden in the dark and nobody wants to talk about it because it's embarrassing, it seems private, and people want to keep that to themselves. Um, I'm, I'm young, I'm only 21 years old, and I found out that I had it last year and I've been cured about it, um, cured of it in only in a year. But there are people who, who deal with this for 15 years. In the book um, that I mentioned earlier, Private Pain, there's testimonies of people who talk about you know that they've been married for 15 years but I've never been able to have sex and they've just turned that part off of them and they um, have just learned to live without it which is which is sad I and mean, it's sad that you would withhold that from you from your spouse and that y'all would just agree to just let that part of you die you know because um, that's I feel like that's such a, a big part of marriage in that it keeps the the um, just the the closeness of yeah. partners together, and um, I would hate to to take that away from Sean. I would hate to take that away from me, and just to let that aspect of our marriage die. And so I feel extremely lucky to, um, to have only found out to find out that I had it a year ago, and to be cured of it now. When I know that there's there's so many other women out there who um, have vaginismus, but are too afraid to talk to their doctors. Are um, feel isolated and alone, and they've been holding on to this burden for so long. Um, when really, I mean, help help is out there. It's just a matter of of not hiding in the dark and being able to step out and get that help for you. Mm -hmm. And how you feel as a woman who now is like. Um treated and like you don't have these fears like what it makes you as a woman like uh... oh yeah I um, definitely feel I just I, I feel more like a woman I feel um, I'm already an, an independent person and it's not that this gives me more like it doesn't make me necessarily more independent but it gives me more confidence I, f I feel better about myself um, I, f I mean I kind of feel like a new woman in some aspects it's just like the the fact that I feel like there's not limitations on what I can do whereas vaginismus put that on me before there were there were things that no matter how hard I tried I could not do them I was unable to but now I know that I can use a tampon I know that I can have sex I know that I can have a 
a child one day when I want to. I know that I can have a simple gynecologist exam um, when needed to, when all of those were things that I couldn't do before, I was unable to do. Um, and I know that it can sound silly in the, in the you know, retrospective, what all other people are, are dealing with, but in my life that's made a big difference. It's just the freedom that I, I have the choice if I want to, and that there's nothing holding me back. And I, I feel like that is, that's the biggest thing. It's just that feeling of defeat is gone. And I mean, I feel victorious in the fact that um, I've conquered vaginismus. That's, I mean, that's what it feels like. It feels like I have conquered vaginismus. And what is your relation now to your vagina? Um, we're good friends now. <laughs> um, uh, me and Sean have made a joke is that because of just doing you know all different kinds of things we've um so many different people have been invited into this journey on, of my life so i'm definitely that part of me that was more private and reserved has definitely been blown open um which is fine because i would i would hate to be cured of vaginismus and hold that to myself because i feel like it is something that needs to be shared because maybe there's somebody out there who who has vaginismus but doesn't know it yet and and maybe my story can help them and I could be you know I can go back to the the physical therapist who tried to help me but really they weren't doing anything beneficial to me the lidocaine that was put in me wasn't beneficial you know me drinking alcohol was not beneficial and um, I can can tell these people that I've I've beat vaginismus and I know that the advice that you're giving people it's inaccurate. I know it doesn't work. Um, I just feel like uh, now that I can can be more of an ad like an advocate for um, people with vaginismus about the importance of of not keeping it to yourself and going to get help. And then once um, you've been cured, be sure to tell somebody about it um, because there are lots of other people who have this same problem because I mean it's not a rare thing it's common there's lots of people who have this this issue and they deserve the same freedom that I now have so I feel like it's my job as somebody who's been cured from vaginismus to be sure to get out and s spread that news so that other women can have that same um, relief that I have and did you, when you came here, you thought that it would be successful or you thought, oh, no, no, you will be in this 5% of, like, what was your feeling? Right, well, there, there was definitely um, a little bit of both. So leading up to the, to the trip of leaving, um, I just, I didn't want to think about it. I tried, I'm in school, so I tried just to completely not worry about this trip. I was just going to focus on my school. I didn't pack to leave until the day of. Um, I had... Nothing. Didn't pack to leave till the day up. I waited toward to the last minute. And there was definitely times where I thought, you know, I mean, hey, I've been dealing with this a year. I've it's not like I've not been trying to get this fixed. What can these people do that couldn't been done to me, you know, in a whole year? How are they gonna be able to fix it in two weeks compared to this whole year that I've been working at it? And I feel like a lot of people who come to this program feel the same way. They're like, you know, what can you do but that I haven't been doing that other doctors haven't tried and um but the I mean but the the main thing is like I said earlier is that is that, that they work on the person and the handling and controlling your anxiety um which gives you that conquer um of vaginismus and so as I got here after my first appointment and talking with the doctors and stuff I was totally confident in their ability um and they and their reputation speaks for themselves. I mean, they have tons of reviews on the success of of people being able to defeat vaginismus. That five percent that they mention are really about people who who come and don't follow through with their appointments, who come and don't listen to the advice, um, who aren't all the way in. If you're, you know, if you're going to come and you want to beat vaginismus, you need to you know you have your trust in the doctors like I I trusted everything that that they said you know I, I did t did their you know their instructions and stuff and within literally after the first day there was a difference um, 
uh, there there were things that I was able to do that I hadn't been able to do. So I feel like um, that 5%, even though that a small number 5 seems, it can stress you out, uh, especially with anxiety. You feel like, well, of course, I'm going to be in the 5%. Um, that's what anxiety will tell you. But you have to um, be able to tell your anxiety no. Like, you're determined that you're going to be in that 95%. You're not going to not listen to the doctors. You're going to make sure you do what they tell you to. You're going to be headstrong that you're in it to win it. You're in it to to feat, um, defeat vaginismus. People keep to themselves that it's such a hush-hush topic. And it's really about being able to break through that. Because, I mean, it's like if you have diabetes... Um, this is what one of the doctors says. If you have diabetes, you don't not take, you know, your insulin. You have to have your insulin on your diet. Um, you know, I have a, a anxiety problem. So, of course, like, it's normal, it's natural that I need to take some medicine to help me with my anxiety. That's okay. We have such a negative look on, on um, anxiety and depression and any kind of mental, uh, what we would call a mental problem. Um, you know, when actually, that's normal. We're, we're people. The mind, the mind and the body, they act as one. So, it was, I was, it's natural that, um, you know, I was so stressed about, and my anxiety was just taking over me that it was affecting my body in more ways than just vaginismus. Like I said, like I had, you know, stomach issues and stuff. And once I, you know, got on that medicine, it was like all of those were gone. Um, so I think that's just, I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's just not only with vaginismus, but people, you know, realizing that it's okay to, to have a little bit of anxiety um, and to be able to admit it and to get help for it. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> I could even tell she lost after she. I think how long was you on the medicine? Almost six months. Yeah. I mean she's lost weight. She's toned up. She's thinned up just just because of. I mean she's not stressed about everything. She's actually eating good and sleeping good. So it's just a total difference. Mm -hmm. So. But I wish y'all success with your yeah. film. I hope Thank it goes you very good. Much.